Hey guys, it's May May again, and I am still using the Artiste cartridge and my stamp set. The Artiste has so many things in it for you to use, but what I thought would be fun is to try to take one of the objects and turn it into something else. Now, I have no idea how this is going to turn out. It was just a thought in my head, and I thought I would try it and see what we get. So, let's get started. First things first, from this cartridge, which is the Artiste cartridge, I put this little piece in here to show me where to go. I am cutting um, this shape right here, which is like a, um, it's a box and it's kind of shaped like a hexagon. So it, it's just really simple, lid on box, and it comes from these two cuts. And then from the same cartridge, I used this label in this bottom section and I cut it twice and I cut it a quarter of an inch different each time. So I cut it at three and a quarter inches and three inches. Now the cool thing about this cartridge, and I've showed you this before, is that it comes with a book of instructions. So here's the assembly instructions. And if you look right here, this is that hexagonal box that we're going to be using. And it's going to show us exactly how to do everything. Now, it's not difficult. You just need to kind of pay attention. Um, and of course, your Cricut is going to cut, um, what is it called? Tag, little tick marks in there. So the Cricut's going to cut that too. So let's get started with the top. This is the top of the box and how it cuts. Notice all the little tabs and all the little spots in between. We need to score those. Now, your Cricut makes those little tick marks for you, and those work just fine if you want to use those, if you just want to bend it, but I don't really like those. I think they kind of, um, they look bad to me. So if you have a Gypsy, I would like cut those out, but I don't have a Gypsy, so I have to use them. But I'm going to score anyway, even though they're there. And they really don't line up right. I don't know why those tick marks don't, you'll see when you start doing it that they don't line up exactly right. But your first score marks are gonna be between all these panels. And this is gonna make the top of your card. I love this paper. It is from Die Cuts with a View Garden Party. I don't even know how old it is. It's been in my drawer. I love it. I very seldom get to use it, so I thought it would be pretty on this. And it has some raised glitter. So pretty. Okay, and now once you scored all those, the only thing you need to do now is score this section because these pieces here, now you can see it like that, that becomes the tab that we're going to glue the lid together with. So you just want to score these like that. Now everything is scored. Now I'm going to use the ATG gun. So I'm just going to put ATG on all those little tabs. You might want to, if you're going to, you know, really pack something in here, you might want to use something like red line tape or score tape or something like that. And score tape would be quick and easy. So, all right. Now then, I'm going to take these and just bend them back slightly. Because these being tabs, I don't have to crease them too hard. Because I need them to kind of stand out. Goodness, I didn't have any adhesive on that one, but I do. Okay. So, we want to lift those up on our score line. like so and then i'm going to bring this in and score it really good in the middle before i stick it down sit it back up and you just line these corners up and put the tab to it this box is pretty simple to, or this part this lid is pretty simple to put together take this one in and score it down really tight You don't have to force them or anything, because once you get it scored, you just stand them up and they stick to each other. Let's turn these out for a second. Put them back in. Stand it up. And stand it up. There is the lid. Look how pretty that is. I like that shape and I love this paper. So I'm going to put this aside for a second while we work on the base. This is the base, and this one has those tick marks all the way around, and all you have to do on this is you're just going to score all these marks and you turn everything, and this is one of those oak drop boxes. When you take the lid off, it drops. So I'm gonna move the book out of the way now because we don't need it. And we'll score. Again, there's those tick marks. I don't know, they just don't work for me. Now, 
Now all we have to do with this is just push them inward. You could use this as a base for a mini album too, you know, because you can cut chipboard with your Cricut too. And these just stand up. I took the back to one of my scrapbooks. This is a piece of chipboard and it's white on one side and then it's the cardboard on the other. I took the back to that and I cut this with the Artiste cartridge with that circle at eight inches. I also did it on multi-cut so it would cut through two times and get it out really good. Then I cut another circle in the pattern paper and I'm going to glue it down just like this. And I'm actually gonna use some Tombow for that. And I'm just gonna line it straight up on that circle all the way around and press it down. Now because this may curl, I'm gonna turn it over and I'm gonna rub it again on this side to kinda bring it back and maybe even do it like this so I can be sure it lays good and flat. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna use some um, Stays On ink, some Timber Brown. It doesn't have to be this, this is just the color I've got that I like. And I'm gonna use one of my inker, um, ink things from Tim Holtz. I don't know what these are called, but I like them. And because that edge is kind of multicolored at this point, I'm just going to go around it, just kind of give it a pretty little distressed edge. You can do this before you put it together, but I think if you do that, the um, you'll have kind of a piece in the middle that doesn't really look distressed. So I think it looks better to kind of do it once the pieces are assembled. looks pretty. Now this one, we'll just ink around all the edges on it as well. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take, this is where you're going to start to see what I'm making, which I'm excited about. I'm, I'm ready to see what it looks like. It's starting to curl a little bit from that glue, so I'm going to work it out so it'll lay good and flat. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add Tombow Mono right here really well. You could use glossy accents, and then I'm going to center this onto that piece that we made and make sure it's good and centered. And I'll show you what we do next. And I'm just gonna fold those pieces down like that so I can actually see where it's going and just get it as centered as I can. And if you wanna be really precise, you can take your ruler and you can measure. That's an inch and a quarter, roughly an inch and a quarter. I'm gonna come back a tiny bit. Let's take this. Needs to go back a little bit. And now I'm gonna mash it into place. And just let that adhere down for a few minutes. And stand it up. Okay guys, so I always, you always told me, or at least in one of my videos, you told me that if I ever make a mistake, you don't mind seeing it, you wanna see it. So I wanna tell you this. Once I put this together and lifted it up and put that lid on it, that lid seemed a little too big. So what I did was I went back and I cut one at three and a quarter inches. So with my base cut at three and a half and my top cut at three and a quarter, I wanna see where it measures three and a half anyway. I don't really know how it figures it out, but with my top cut at three and a quarter, it works just fine. The only thing I don't like is how tall it is for the project I'm making. If I was using it as a, as a box, it'd be perfect, but I'm using it for a bonnet. So I'm gonna go in and I think I'm gonna cut about a half inch off of all of these all the way around. So I just wanted to let you know I was gonna do that. Okay, so now I've cut a half inch off of the height for my project. I've cut the lid that I like. I'll put all of this inside and show you how it ended up looking. That is much more height appropriate for an Easter bonnet. Don't you think? It's so cute already. So now I'm just gonna dress up this brim and make it look like a little Easter bonnet. So I'm gonna take this off. And I think what would be cute considering you can take the lid off is I'm gonna tie some ribbon around it that'll hold it up in this shape. Cause you can take the ribbon, I mean, you can take the brim off without having to, you know, untie anything. So that's what we're gonna do first is tie some ribbon around it. Now then for this part, this is what I'm gonna do. 
I got a good size piece of ribbon, more than I'm gonna need. I have a piece of tape on it from where it's brand new on the roll. So it's more than I'm gonna need. And what I'm gonna do is just kind of in the middle of the ribbon, I'm just gonna run some ATG. I'm gonna use the wider one and just run some just to kind of help me, kind of give me an extra hand so that I won't have to hold it in place quite so much. Then I'm gonna bring this over. I'm gonna take that piece that I put the ATG on and just go ahead and kind of stick it to the band in the back and stand these up. And if you want to, you could put the ATG on all of them. I just don't think you're gonna to need to. Just to kind of get yourself started. Then for the rest, just pull it up and tie a bow. And now I'm just gonna cut these on a slant. This looks like a classic Easter bonnet to me. I love Easter bonnets. I like to wear hats on Easter. If I do this year, I'll show y'all a picture because sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. So let me turn this sideways. Look at that. Isn't that precious? What a cute gift. I mean, it's really substantial. You could really make this a cute gift. Okay, before we're done, I want to add a couple more little tiny things. Like, remember I told you about the tag I made? Let me show you that. So here's the base, the darker color. And this is the lighter color. Now, I don't know if you know this or not, but there's not a shadow feature on the Artiste cartridge. So if I put it like this, it's going to look a little odd. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to cut the tag off of this end. Just lining my scissors up like that. And now I can put this tag in here and have just a little bit of an edge all the way around. That's what I'm going to do. So let's adhere that one down. I think you could even put this out like as home decor like a candy dish, it's just so pretty. Okay, so we got that ready, and now we just need a sentiment for it. Now, I'm thinking I'm gonna give this to one of my kids' Sunday school teachers, because I just think it would be a good gift for Sunday. So I'm gonna use this one that says, Some Bunny Loves You. And I'm sure you've seen it before, I've shown y'all my stamps before, but it's that one, Some Bunny Loves You. And I'm gonna do it in that same stays on brown. Somebody loves you. My paper has a linen feel to it, so it gave that kind of a distressed look, which I like because we did the, the inking around the other parts. Now, as you see, I forgot to ink this tag. Let's do a little bit of ink and it won't hurt it. Just a little. Now then, I have some Baker's Twine that's kind of in that same green, which I think is so pretty. I never get to use these colors. You know, I have boys. So these colors are rare for me. This is a treat for me. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna run this through this hole, like so. And then, not done yet. I pulled out all my close to my heart stuff today. Um, this twine is actually from the twinery. So that's not close to my heart, but this is some bling that I've had. And I, never, I don't do the hat pin chic stuff, which I think is so pretty, but I don't do it. But look at this hat pin that comes with this. I love it. This is from the bling assortment. I don't know if you can still get it. It's Z1466, but I'm sure Judy can help you with that one if you have any questions. And you can find her on my blog. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take this. It's really hard to do because I can't hold this sideways, but here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna tie the baker's twine around this knot here. So I can tell you what I'm gonna do, but it's hard to show you. So I'm pulling it up through like this. So there's the Somebody Loves You. And then this blingy button, it is a button, it's got holes in it. I'm gonna run it through there on both sides. Like I said, this is gonna be a gift, so I don't mind kind of being a little overkill on it. And now I'm just gonna let this go to the middle of that bow, like so, and I'm gonna tie it on. And then for the last touch, I'm going to use the hat pin. And I'm just going to feed it through behind the bow and bring it kind of out the other side. You want it to stand up a little bit. And something I'm going to do 
I don't know if this is what you're supposed to do, but it's what I'm going to do so I don't hurt anybody. So I'm going to put the little piece that comes with it back on the other end that seals that needle up. So now I have a bow and I have a hat pin. Mess with my bow a little bit. And it says, somebody loves you. Let's put the hat on, the top on. Actually, let's put some candy in. This candy looks kind of cute in there because of the pastel-y colors. So we got the candy in there, and now we'll put the lid on. And the lid's going to hold that top together. <laughs> Guys, I love this. Very proud of this. I think this looks so cute, and it's so substantial. I can't wait to show you pictures. Let me hold it like this. Look how cute this is, like a bonnet. I'm in love with it. So I can't wait to show you pictures of it, but um, that's how I'm gonna. That's how I did that one. So check that out. Be sure to check out Miss Judy's website, and be sure to check out um, the May May Made It, Mr. Big Ear Stamps. Somebody loves you guys. Okay, talk to you later. Bye bye.